What truly caused the tragic crash of Kenya Airways Flight 431? It's a question that haunted investigators for approximately two years following the incident. The final report, published in 2002, provided some much-needed answers. The Commission of Inquiry concluded that the cause of the accident was a collision with the sea, a result of the pilot pushing forward on the control column to stop the stick shaker, following the initiation of a stall warning on rotation. The catch? The airplane was not in a true stall situation. This action by the pilot put the airplane into a descent unbeknownst to the crew despite the radio altimeter callouts. The lack of external visual references further complicated the situation. The takeoff was performed towards the sea and at night, providing no external visual cues that could have alerted the crew to the direct proximity of the sea. To make matters worse, the Ground Proximity Warning System, or GPWS, warnings that could have alerted the crew to an imminent contact with the sea were masked by the priority stall and overspeed warnings. In the aftermath of this tragic crash, investigators made several recommendations to prevent similar incidents in the future. They advised civil aviation authorities to include trainings on recognizing false stall alarm during phases of flight close to the ground. They also suggested that the flight crew should minimize loss of altitude by applying maximum thrust and using optimal pitch. The recommended pitch attitude is 10 degrees up if the aircraft is below 20,000 feet. The report didn't stop at the crash itself. It also shed light on the inefficient rescue operation in Abidjan. Survivors lamented the slow pace of the rescue operation, arguing that other survivors might not have perished had rescuers arrived in time. The Commission recommended that civil authorities in coastal airports ensure the availability of appropriate equipment to ease search and rescue efforts. These findings led to several recommendations to prevent future accidents. But the story doesn't end here. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the contributing factors to the crash, the lessons learned, and the aftermath of this tragic incident in our upcoming scenes. But what were the elements that contributed to this unfortunate incident? A question that has been asked by many, and one that we'll delve into now. The Commission of Inquiry highlighted several factors that collectively led to the tragic crash of Kenya Airways Flight 431. At the heart of the matter was a false stall alarm that occurred as the plane was taking off. The pilot, reacting to what he believed was a genuine stall situation, applied forward pressure on the control column to stop the stick shaker, a procedure typically used in such situations. However, the airplane was not actually stalling. This action unfortunately put the aircraft into a descent without the crew realizing it. Adding to the complexity of the situation, the Ground Proximity Warning System, or GPWS, that should have alerted the crew to their closeness to the sea was masked. Priority stall and overspeed warnings, as per their design, took precedence over the GPWS warnings. These warnings are prioritized to ensure pilots address the most immediate threats to the aircraft. In this instance, however, this prioritization unfortunately masked the imminent danger of collision with the sea. Another crucial factor was the lack of external visual references. The takeoff was performed towards the sea at night. Without clear visual cues, the crew was unaware of their direct proximity to the sea. This lack of awareness further impeded their ability to accurately assess and respond to the situation. To add to these, the radio altimeter callouts, which could have indicated the descent, went unnoticed amidst the confusion. This series of overlapping events, combined with the lack of visual references, led to the tragic collision with the sea. Understanding these factors is crucial in preventing similar accidents in the future. As we navigate the complex world of aviation safety, it's important to remember that every incident provides an opportunity to learn, adapt and enhance safety measures. The lessons from Flight 431 are a stark reminder of this truth. Or what lessons can we draw from this tragic event? As we delve into the findings of the investigation team, there are valuable takeaways that can help prevent future accidents. A key recommendation was to emphasize training for pilots on recognizing false stall alarms during phases of flight close to the ground. This was a critical factor in the Kenya Airways Flight 431 crash, where the pilots reacted to a false stall alarm leading to a catastrophic descent into the sea. 
Training organizations and operators under the authority of civil aviation authorities are urged to incorporate this crucial aspect into their syllabus. This will arm pilots with the knowledge and skills to correctly identify and respond to false stall alarms, potentially averting disaster. The team also shared new insights from Airbus regarding the optimal stall recovery procedure. This procedure emphasizes the importance of minimizing altitude loss by applying maximum thrust and using an optimal pitch. If the aircraft is below 20,000 feet, the recommended pitch attitude is 10 degrees up. The implementation of these measures can significantly enhance the ability of flight crews to handle stall situations, ensuring a swift and safe recovery. Moreover, the report highlighted the need for more efficient rescue operations. The survivors of Flight 431 commented on the slow pace of rescue efforts, suggesting that more lives could have been saved with a faster response. This led to another recommendation for civil authorities at coastal airports to ensure the availability of appropriate equipment to expedite search and rescue efforts. The lack of maritime equipment, gaps in communication, and inclement weather and situation at the crash site all contributed to the difficulty of the rescue operation and these elements need to be addressed. In conclusion, the lessons learned from this tragic event underscore the importance of continuous training and preparedness. By implementing these recommendations, we can enhance aviation safety, improve emergency response times and ultimately save lives. These recommendations aim to improve aviation safety and prevent similar accidents. But what about the rescue operation? Could more lives have been saved? The rescue operation following the crash of Kenya Airways Flight 431 garnered criticism for its inefficiency. Every tick of the clock is crucial in the aftermath of such a disaster and the slow pace of the operation was lamented by many. The rescue operation was faced with a myriad of challenges. First and foremost, there was a distinct lack of maritime equipment. The sea can be a treacherous and unpredictable place, and without the necessary tools, the rescuers were left ill-equipped to navigate the turbulent waters and locate survivors. Communication is the backbone of any successful rescue operation. In this case, however, there were significant gaps in communication, further hampering the rescue efforts. A lack of coordination and clear information flow can turn a challenging situation into an insurmountable one. The weather conditions at the crash site added another layer of difficulty. The night sky and the vast expanse of the sea offered no visual cues, making the search for survivors even more challenging. The sea and the weather were formidable opponents that the rescuers had to contend with. Survivors of the crash commented on the slow pace of the rescue operation, arguing that more lives could have been saved had the rescuers arrived sooner. These first-hand accounts underscored the urgency and importance of a well-coordinated and efficient rescue operation. In the wake of the disaster, the investigation team made a series of recommendations. They urged civil aviation authorities to ensure the availability of appropriate maritime equipment for coastal airports. Preparedness is key, and these measures could significantly improve the speed and efficiency of future rescue efforts. The rescue operation certainly had its challenges, but its shortcomings have led to important recommendations for future rescue efforts. In the aftermath of the crash, how were the victims' families compensated? This question begs our attention as we delve into the financial restitution following the Kenya Airways Flight 431 disaster. The families of the victims bore a heavy, irreparable loss. To help ease the financial strain, Kenya Airways stepped forward with compensation. The families of 60 deceased Nigerians received a sum of 130,000 US dollars each. This payment, however, was not immediate for all. The families of those whose bodies were not found had to wait for seven years before they could be settled in accordance with international aviation laws. This compensation, although it could never replace the lives lost, was a gesture of responsibility from Kenya Airways. It showed the airline's commitment to its passengers and their families. It also served as a stark reminder to all airlines of the high cost of safety oversights, not just in human lives, but also in financial terms. The Kenya Airways Flight 431 crash was a tragic event that shook the aviation industry to its core. It brought to light the dire consequences of misinterpretations and the importance of clear communication, especially in critical situations. It underscored the need for comprehensive training for flight crews on recognizing false stall alarms during phases of flight close to the ground. It highlighted the necessity for efficient rescue operations and the availability of appropriate maritime equipment.
This tragic event has left a lasting impact on the aviation industry and highlights the importance of continuous efforts to improve aviation safety. The story of Flight 431 is a testament to the fact that we must never stop learning, never stop improving, and never stop striving for the highest standards of safety in aviation. In conclusion, let's remember the lives lost, the lessons learned, and the changes sparked by this unfortunate event. As we continue to fly, let's ensure their memories are honoured through our commitment to safety. Share, like, and subscribe. Let us know in the comments which aviation disaster you'd like us to analyse next.